Outstanding Student Services Award at the Teacher of the Year Gala at Prospect Bay Country Club. On March 26th, juniors will be taking the SATs during first and second period. And on March 28th, report cards will be sent home electronically. And starting on Friday, March 29th through Sunday, April 7th, schools will be closed for spring break. And that's all I have. Great. Go ahead, Mr. Sandifer. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Sandifer. Is it? All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for missing the last couple of meetings. <laughs> I was very busy with wrestling, and I would like to thank you for still reading my updates and what I had to say. Uh, as March begins and the weather starts to warm up, Ken Allen has a lot of fun, new, exciting things going on. And uh, last Friday, March 1st, our spring sports season started, and I'm happy to report that all is going well, except for the current weather interfering with some practices tonight. But other than that, everything's going great. Um, Ken Allen's spring musical called My Fair Lady de debuted this weekend, and although I've not been able to attend it yet, all of the staff and students that I've talked to have said it's really amazing. Uh, one main focus for us this month is college and career readiness. So we held a Life After High School event and on Monday, and we also have ASVAB testing, career fairs, and guest speaker Mark Patton talking about gaining entrance into military academies and tons of other stuff like that. Going along with college readiness, we are, we are holding the school day SAT test on March 26th, which is an amazing opportunity for all the juniors in our school to take the SAT for free. Lastly, the advanced marketing class, which I'm a part of, is hosting our 20th annual prom expo event, which is an, was, which is an opportunity for marketing students to build their event planning skills and for seniors to show off their talents, prom dresses, and more. It's a really exciting event, and if you guys have a chance, I'd really encourage going. It's only $5, and it's really fun. So, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Salen. Yeah, so hands down, My Fair Lady must see. It's a positive, amazing opportunity to see some true talent. Yeah. Um, so I just have to give a huge shout out to their whole cast. I, I, again, talk about memorization um, of some of these parts. I was just blown away. Um, and this weekend I'm going to see Beauty and the Beast so on Saturday night, so I'm sure it's going to be just as good. But I just wanted to give a shout out to all of our theater students who are involved in those and the band, um, the live bands playing the music every, you know, mm -hmm. across the way. So just a really positive experience. If you haven't had a chance to go see both plays, please, please try to get out there and see Beauty them. and the Beast is one to see. That's not bad. That's possible. Oh, you saw this? Okay. So that's yeah, that's, my, that's, that's my Saturday night. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. All right, citizen participation. <clears throat> yes, we have a number of people on the list. Um, before we begin, we ask that all speakers keep keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including the telephone number and addresses. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire to and right to convey your message freely but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. First up, Maggie Schmidt. So I don't have a microphone. Am I supposed to face you or? Right here, she's gonna sit right there. We have stuff to leave for the board members. Can I just leave that here? Yep. Sure. Okay, great. Okay. great. Fabulous. Goodness. Okay, well, I'm not much for public speaking, so I'm sorry, um, but uh, good evening. My name is Maggie Schmidt, and this is Beth Schrader. Um, we work for the district, uh, supporting the students and the nurses of the county schools, and between the two of us, we um, support, we each support seven schools. Um, school nurses are an integral part of the education system and essential in many ways. We are here tonight to bring points to justify why it's imperative to get and keep the two permanent float nurse positions in the budget. 
Um, just to start off, we are both experienced nurses with a wide range of skills and education that we bring to support schools, uh, nurses, and the students. We have um, public health backgrounds, uh, training and experience in emergency preparedness and communicable diseases, and necessary training in preparing and participating in school safety initiatives. We have received multiple different FEMA incident command training certificates and have participated in emergency responses, both actual and practice. Um, we have supported our, our students, nurses, and staff since November 2021. Uh, we cover health rooms when nurses are out sick or on personal leave. Our health rooms are responsible for the daily medical care of sick children and those with chronic medical condition. Um, nurses perform catheterizations, tube feedings, trach suctioning, emergency medication administration for students with diabetes, epilepsy, asthma, and life-threatening allergies every day. Um, approximately 22% of our county students have a health condition that requires a health plan to be in place at school. We administer daily medications, perform nursing assessments, collaborate with the nurses on healthcare plans and educate staff. In addition, we support students and maintain COMAR and MSDE compliance in various ways, such as reviewing new enrollments, confirming and coordinating immunizations, developing individual healthcare plans and emergency care plans, and tracking and reporting communicable diseases. This is really important right now. Our schools have a lot of illnesses in them. Um, we are responsible for monitoring them and reporting them to the local health department. I don't know if everyone knows that, um, but stuff like COVID-19, the flu, stomach viruses, conjunctivitis, head lice, those all have to be reported and that falls on the nurse in addition to her regular duties of seeing kids. Um, we also cover field trips when a nurse is needed for a student with complex medical needs, otherwise they wouldn't be able to go on the field trip. Um, and that allows the nurse at that school to remain in the health room and see the rest of the population. Um, in the 2022 to 2023 school year, the float nurses, the two of us, covered 111 days total in the health rooms by ourselves. And so far this year, we've covered over 90 days. Um, these include covering a school left without a nurse due to retirement, um, covering a nurse's medical absence, covering FMLA leave when the nurse cared for a family member. We do have 16 substitute nurses, but 12 of them have full-time jobs. Um, three are retired and can only work a limited number of hours each month. One is a substitute for another county and can't work very often. And, and one is not even going to continue because she's never been hired. She never. She, she didn't. Is that three minutes? Yeah, that's, that's your three minutes. Oh. Um, uh, sorry. I timed it at home. <laughs> it never works. Okay, well, I'll leave it. I have stats, okay? This is the first job that I've truly loved. And I'm sad. Thank you guys thank very you, much. Thank you, thank you. There's, um, in addition to this, there's a letter from one of the nurses who could not be here. Do you want me to leave? Just let me give it to Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Richard McNeil. Music. That's, 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 that's a gift. <clears throat> now this guy's got it down. Three minutes, right? <laughs> All that experience. I'm working on it. <laughs> Good evening, Richard McNeil, and, and uh, here to make a couple of comments from the retirement group and personally. Um, again, I want to say congratulations to the drama departments because uh, I had opportunity to see both of them this past weekend. Phenomenal, you know, just the talent and the skills, not only for what's up there, but all the background, you know, the, all the sets and all that kind of stuff, moving it around and, you know, um, got a little bit of taste of that when I was the principal out there with uh, um, just some wonderful talent though. And voices are just great, so I appreciate that. And I, you know, I don't think our community understands the talent. We don't have theaters, uh, movie theaters in Queen Anne's County, but we have skilled students who can entertain for reasonable price. So it go out if you haven't seen it those of you listening to wherever. Um, the also want to just recognize the fact that uh, I heard where we had two schools or identified as purple schools for, uh, yeah. and I think that's again uh, a tribute to uh, the programs that we try to uh, uh, pertain to everything on that part. Um, I know that the uh, budget is a tough time. Uh, I, I encourage you uh, as you go forward with this that you know, uh, programs that benefit students uh, in the classroom, but especially beyond, you know, the mental health of our students is very important. 
and you read a lot of studies about what's been going on around the nation in terms of mental health of students, even going down to the elementary program. So hopefully that's in your thinking as you go forward and um, as you meet with the county commissioners, which I'm sure you already have, but as you move forward with them, I hope they keep in mind the importance of uh, supporting our students in the classroom and, and beyond that. Um, we are, our retirement group is uh, meeting next uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, our uh, numbers who are coming out for luncheons are increasing and uh, just it's almost a big social event. This particular one is our annual report. We, we are required to give an annual report, so we'll do that, have good food, and have some fun along the way also. We are also in the process of encouraging students who are going into the field of education to apply for our scholarships. So anybody listening out there, if you know of, of a senior who's going into that, uh, I'm going to be meeting with the teachers who teach the um, pre, uh, teacher program, teacher academy program. So, uh, I, I get that mixed up, sorry. Um, we'll be meeting with them to encourage students to apply for that. and. Uh, um, because we've only had like five or six from both high schools over the last couple of years. And uh, I know there's more students out there. So we're, looking, we're getting ready to get that going. So I am finished. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good timing. I feel like the person that usually did this played a practical joke on the music. <laughs> Sharon Rhodes. Uh, yet. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm trying to not have that embarrassment again, thank, frankly. Um, Dr. Salins, board members, hi, I'm Sharon Rhodes. I'm Queen Anne's County High School's nurse. Um, I have a few things to support, maybe your decision on changing this to a budget position. Ready? I'm here tonight for, to urge the Board of Education to reconsider the potential decision in cutting the grant funding that supports the float viral or the vital float nurse position within our school district. As someone who has served as a nurse for 18 years and who's deeply vested in the health and well being of our student population, I can't emphasize enough in retaining this position. With a student population of 1,204 students, which increases daily with the Ken Island High School CTE students that come a half a day, the need for adequate medical support is undeniable. The float nurse position has been instrumental in ensuring that students receive timely, comprehensive care, effectively functioning as a second nurse in the school system. The National Association of School Nurses recommends its a student to nurse ratio of one to 750 students. That's healthy students. As the sole nurse responsible for the school health needs, it is immense challenge for me to provide the level of care and attention that our students require, particularly in the face of increasing chronic diseases such as diabetes, asthma, and post COVID era viral or illnesses. The float nurse position has proven invaluable in addressing these challenges. The presence allows for quicker identification, response to potential emergencies, improved efficiency in communicating with teachers regarding the student's health issues, enhanced safety during emergencies that require simultaneous attention at two ends of a school. Moreover, the float nurses serves as a crucial backup in the absence of a regular nursing or regular nursing staff. Unlike the PRN, PRN subs, they're not always available due to their other jobs and dedications on place cells. These professionals are in a moment able to go to another school professionally, ensuring the schools are not left without medical support, which is vulnerable and can be held for liability. Terminating this position due to grant funding constraints would not only jeopardize the health and safety of our students, but also undermine the effectiveness of our entire school health program. The float nurses, they're familiar with all the students. They do every school in this county. Um, they're conf they are confident in managing the most fragile students and their availability during emergencies is our irreplaceable assets that we cannot afford to lose. I implore the Board of Education to, to please look at this position and, and, and decide whether, you know, the position is worth moving to the budget instead of a grant position. 
By doing so, we demonstrate our commitment to providing quality and support to every student in this district. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. I'm going to leave this here. Because sure, I, absolutely. Sure. You can um, give it to Dr. Kibler if you'd like. Okay. I'll make sure to before, make copies for the board. Sure. Um, before we move on, I'm assuming, are, is everyone else going to be speaking on the same topic in the, the row there? She was the last person on the oh, Okay, all right. I'm so sorry for my flubs. Oh, no, it was, okay. it was wonderful. You did great. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I'm going to leave it so you can read it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that was We're it. done. Oh. No, there's, unless somebody else didn't all right. sign up. Okay, information items. First up is our clay target team. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the time. Um, I spoke in front of you guys a bunch of times. So I hope you're not getting tired of me yet. Um, a couple things I wanted to talk about. One, I know um, the email that I sent. Um, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Your name and for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Sean Connolly, head coach of the Kent Island clay target team. I live in Chester. Um, I know you, um, many of you responded to my email and I hope everybody read it. Uh, I have two things I wanted to cover. Um, the first is a little bit of a, I guess, I guess a celebration and pump up with the team. Um, let you guys know, uh, we made a national publication and I got uh, copies for everybody. Um, Thank you. Pool Magazine is um, issued by the, the league. Um, goes out to 36,000 students around the country in 37 states. And uh, they interviewed myself and a couple of the students. Um, I thought it was very cool to see, see our, um, our spotlight. So um, on, I guess on to the, the main business while I'm here. Um, asking again to, to extend the, the, um, the limit, the student limit on the team. I know last year um, this was brought about again. And um, Mr. Smith, you, you had said that um, other um, sports teams at the schools do have limits. And you're correct, they do. Um, but those limits are usually based on a reason, um, either funding, uh, transportation, uh, the nature of the sport. Um, none of those items that are that limits those teams apply to us. Um, we're self-funded. We provide all the equipment. We participate at a private facility. We provide all the insurances, all the transportation, um, all the sponsorships. Uh, we, all the coaches are volunteers. So. Um, there's, there are other teams that are unlimited, um, and it's you know nature of that sport like football. You know they need a lot of students um, to field a, a quality product, so they need a lot of those students. Um, I'm just trying to provide this sport to as many as I can. So uh, last time I spoke, um, I was asking a favor because it's really hard on me to try to tell students that are interested that they don't have it, they can't participate because there's no spot. Um, so what I decided to do this time was maybe change the tact a little bit instead of saying remove the limit and let us have an unlimited amount of students to point out that there is already a limit based um, in the rule the, the league rules and it's the coach to student ratio the league mandates that we have 10 students for every one coach and that's why you guys limited us to 10 students the first year because I was the only one talking to you um, that year we had five coaches um, I'm glad we had the 10 students that, that first year, but um, now we have six coaches and we have many more that would uh, be willing to help out. And they're always parents. Parents want to help out um, and support the team. So um, what I've mandated is even though the league um, says the one to 10 ratio, we want that even stricter. So I've mandated one for every five students. Reason being is we have uh, squads of five when we're at the range and there's a coach for every squad. Um, so we're already doing more than the league requires. And I think if we just take the cap off it and tell us that we have to do the one per, uh, per five students, we'd be able to field um, a, a little bit larger team. And if we don't have a, a coach, then a parent you know, is gonna have to step up or their student couldn't participate. One of the beauty, uh, beauties of this league is that everybody participates. That's why I don't want to do a tryout necessarily and get the, the most skilled students the spots because then it's just like every other sport. And then the kids that don't um, participate in anything that aren't really athletic um, in other sports, they're going to miss out on an opportunity. So that's all I wanted to do is provide this opportunity to, to as many students as possible. 
So if anybody has any questions, I don't, I don't have three minutes. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're on the schedule. Yeah, you yeah, are on the schedule. You're on the agenda. That's for public comment. Yeah. So you're if anybody fine. has any comments or questions or concerns or. Um, well, no comments, questions. I mean, we, we have certainly have discussed this a few times. I'm not sure if you're aware, though, that this is not under the board's purview. This is under the superintendent's purview. So that's nothing that the um, board can make a decision on. Okay, that I did not. the superintendent. Okay. Yeah. I don't one thing I would ask, yeah. I know we. And I take one sport, field hockey or soccer. There's all kinds of feeder systems through parks and rec and other, you know, different clubs. Do you have that or you, it's all under you? I mean, I mean, when you say, you know, we, we've authorized 20 per school for this sport. Correct. Are there feeder clubs where these kids can participate and maybe well, not be on this team, but but, but still we, we tackled that when we first started. There there are 4-H. You know they can they can go to 4-H and they can participate. There's also private leagues that that, that they can um, they can attend and, and participate in the sport, um, but they don't have that sense of community and being a part of the school. That's the whole one of the reasons of being a part of a school sports program. You get to wear the uniform. You get to be a part of something, um, and and everybody knows that's involved with the education. You get the students involved with an extracurricular activity. They, they're more part of the team or more part of the school. Their school spirit goes up. Their academics go up. Um, their mental health gets a little bit better. Um, so it's, it all ties into itself, and I tie it into the the student or the parents as well. You want to have parents involved in students' lives. Um, this gives them a reason to. If their student wants to be a part of the team and there's no spot, they're going to have to step up and be a coach. So um, I think it's a win-win all the way around. But they could be a coach, not necessarily with a, with a uniform, but a tech coach of maybe where maybe a freshman or a sophomore that would be moving up to the team in the future. I'm just asking that question. What was that? I don't understand. If you have 20 that make the team, mm -hmm. they're probably more seasoned older students. I don't know. Maybe they're younger ones that are all for freshmen. But that should also be the feeder school or feeder group that you know parents work with them and stuff like that. And but would not be on the 20 man roster of either of the two schools. Yeah, I don't know how that would work with the insurances. And that's the other thing with, with tryouts. Um, I don't know how the tryouts would work because they have to pass the safety program before they can even participate. So a tryout to me is participating. They're out of range. They've, they've got to pass all those safety things and, and register with the league before they can even participate, which is, like I said, in my eyes, is the same thing as trying out. So a separate team or a separate club or, or activities outside that, um, that is not, um, that's not my, my purview. I mean, yes, they can do it. Um, they wouldn't be part of the team and that's where they get the benefit from it. Generally, how many kids are asking to be on the team that you're, you're turning away because of that? Uh, last year was about five. Okay. So not a lot. Um, but at the same time, I don't attend the recruiting that they, they just had spring sports. Um, I didn't attend because I don't want to recruit a bunch of kids that I can't have on the team. Sure. Um, I'm not asking for any more. I'm not looking for any more. Um, and there's, there's several that, that aren't eligible. Um, also eligibility kicked us uh, a little bit last year. There's a couple of kids that didn't have their grades up, um, but they didn't have those spots. So if their spots were there, maybe they would have tried a little bit harder in school so they could have been on the team. Um, is that five per high school on average or pass, just five uh, kids I, i'm not sure about queen anne's um i think they're probably in the same boat um i think nathan told me the same thing is they're they're not really recruiting they're they're full okay. so okay you know, we've done everything by word of mouth and and you know facebook right, but, you know that's that's where everybody's where we're getting our spots from so so first of all, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for your leadership, um, getting things up and going. Um, you know, you can sense the passion there. You've, you know, we're the only school district public in yeah. the state of Maryland that provides this opportunity for students. Also, President Bennett mentioned scholarship opportunities for kids. So just thank you for being, the, you know, that advocate for this programming to start. Um, at this time, we won't be expanding, and there's a couple reasons why. Um, and I'd like to just share some information from MABE, which okay. is our Maryland Association for Boards of Education. They are the ones who insure us as a school district, um, along with 17 other Maryland districts. So um, 
Talbot County, as you probably well know, has started to pursue yep. and looking at expanding. Um, again, you know, we've asked about expansion as well. Um, what does it look like? What does it sound like? How does it impact us? And um, they just received an attorney's opinion um, to caution and expansion because although you're insured and completely self-sufficient, because they're affiliated with the school district, um, it exposes us to potential risk and litigation. Um, so they had a meeting on uh, February 21st where they talked about this in great length. Um, they identified some of their key concerns and they will be meeting again in April um, over uh, the MABE conference, which is April 24th through the 26th. And they'll be looking at um, should they be revising the casualty scope um, should they be amending that scope or should they be cr creating additional premium contributions? So right now, um, any firearms that are in our school district, which obviously we have school resource officers who are funded through the Sheriff's Department, but we actually have to pay an increased premium for them to be in our schools because of that firearm risk. Um, so I don't know what the end result will be of that. Um, but if it is an increase in premiums, then we need to, we don't know what they will be. We need to think about and talk about that. But it's, it's really for those reasons that at this point, we just are gonna kind of be at a stay. Okay. Um, I think we're very blessed and, and very lucky that we've had this opportunity in the district um, again, and that we're the only ones and that everybody's looking at us very envious that a lot of them want their students to have the opportunity. But I think also we need to just be plain grateful. Like, let's just be very thankful. We do have um, some, you know, 40 spots for students. It's great to have a, a waiting list in, a, in an aspect. It makes students just want it that much more. Um, and, and I just think, you know, we, we do have limitations. Football is not, I mean, you might think football is completely open, but we only have so many jerseys and so many helmets to participate. So every sport does have its limitations. Um, and for all the reasons you shared, I, I completely see your point and, and, and I appreciate them. Um, but for these reasons, we're going to wait to see how this all unfolds with our, okay. you know, if, if we were to have a catastrophic event, um, even if we were pay, say we paid uh, higher premiums, but we had a catastrophic event, we would be impacting 17 other districts. And so we, we really have to weigh that out. And um, we don't want to be kicked out of, of the consortium there because we're too high of risk. So that's something we just have to weigh out. But I wish you and your team um, the best of luck for your season. I look forward to your continued progress and I look forward to more students have an opportunity to get some scholarships and do great things. I thank you. I understand and I, I, I do thank you all for, for allowing us to, to, to be in existence. I, I am working with the, the parents in Talbot and another one in, in Dorchester. So that was my goal all along was to bring this to, uh, to other students. So. Um, so Great. thank you for thank your time. Thank you. Thank and you yeah, very much. Yeah, good job, Sean. Yeah. Really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Otherwise, we back you guys up 100%. Yeah, as you I'll, know. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come, come back. Um, That's fine. Okay, pass it down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, please. We're going to give one to Sid, but he's not here. So. <laughs> I'll take one for him. <laughs> you don't need one. Thank you. Okay, fine. We're going to have to give one to Sid. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll share mine. Thank How about you. that? Thank you all. <laughs> Dr. Oh, Dr. Sprinkle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. already there. Good evening, President Bent, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members. For the record, I am Marcia Sprinkle, the Assistant Superintendent. Tonight, I bring before you three policies for revision for the first read and to be posted. The first policy is policy 609, county-owned textbooks and materials. Any questions? I had a quick question. Yes. Um, it was talking about book covers are to be used when they are provided. Do we provide book covers? Some, well, sometimes we do when they're donated. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's funny because before COVID, we used to have ones that were all sponsored by different businesses, yes. and they would just drop off. I mean, a significant like by partners and community members. And, and since COVID, we haven't done that, so it's probably something we need to get back to. Um, to be able to protect them as okay, much as so possible. So that's why we're gonna keep it in, is because I was, yeah, I was like, I, really I know like we used to, to draw them on paper. Paper bags, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing was the loaning of equipment should not be a general practice. Does it happen? Do we loan, what type of material do we loan out? Well, of course we have the laptops that we actually loan students and there what will be times about? when things have to be loaned, but they have to be at the discretion of the principal because we want those items and supplies returned um, but it's not a general practice that we loan other 
things outside of those, like okay. the laptops right. and technology pieces. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions about that one? Okay. Nope. The next policy is 618 field trips. I just had one question about where it says, the number of chaperones determined by the central office. I mean, do you guys all get together or is that just a special person at the central office? Like who determines who? Well, that is a, a process. And what happens typically is we have our supervisors take a look at that as well as the assistant superintendent. Okay. And we try to make sure that the student teacher ratio equals out. Mm -hmm. Like for primary students and elementary students and lower grades, we'd like more chaperones. And then in middle school, we kind of like increase it a little bit. And then in high school, okay. the same numbers. But we also like to look, you know, also at males, females. We like to look oh, at Yeah, that. no, I get all that. It was just weird. It said determined by the central office as if. Yeah. So we have to. Excel is getting together and talking. You know, everybody in everybody's <laughs> central office. Like, what? No, it's, okay. a, it's an <laughs> approval process through our uh, field trip system, which is travel trackers. Okay. And with travel trackers, it goes through our supervisors first, and then it actually comes to me or the assistant superintendent. Great. So we take a look at all of that just to make sure that, you know, there is enough supervision for our students. Thank you. If there are no questions, the final policy is 628, overnight field trips. Any questions? All right. It was pretty easy. Well, yeah, thank thank you. you very much, Dr. Sprinkle. Thank you. Ah, okay. They're all ahead of me here. Mr. Berklos is next for policy 106. Good evening, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, board members, executive team, Dr. Salins. Uh, this evening I have the second read for policy 106 the naming or renaming of public schools and school facilities. Uh, from the first read, uh, we have not received any public comment. Okay. Any questions? All right. None. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Murdoch. Good evening, President Bennett, board members, executive team, Dr. Sale. Uh, we're here for the second read of policy 250, the drug and alcohol policy. Uh, there's been no public comment uh, made at this point. Any questions? Any questions? State and federal mandated. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're all all covered. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Murdoch. Dr. Noll. Put them up and put them down. <laughs> Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, Michael Noll, Director of Human Resources. I come before you tonight for second reads of policy 411 and 410 and 410.1. I'm gonna group them together just to save a little bit of time for you. Uh, they have both been posted for a month, no public comments, open for any questions. Anything, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Nice job, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Kibler. Let's see if you can top that. I know, right? Got all kinds of comments on this. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. Uh, so uh, we were gonna talk, I think, tag team kind of mm -hmm. Dr. Salins and I right now on um, a proposed waiver for the school year calendar. I, I guess I would, I'll just maybe start with, we've had two, we've been closed for two inclement weather days. Right now, we made one of those days up on President's Day, and then we still had two days built into the school calendar. So we're not asking to vote on the end of the school year yet, but as of right now, and that's probably where I'll kick it, yeah. uh, our last day of school right now looks like it would be, last student day would be on Monday, June 10th. So the discussion point that I wanted to bring to the board is that to bring students back on a half day on a Monday is not really very efficient or effective as we kick off into summer mode. So I wanted to see the appetite of the board if they would like me to pursue a waiver of 180 days, and that is allowable in Comar. I, 
as the board, we can ask for a waiver of, of the 180 days to, to go 179 days because bringing kids back on a Monday isn't really efficient or effective. I'm happy to do so. I don't know whether it would be approved or not approved, but I think that it, it I think in my recommendation would be that I think we should move that direction. The worst case scenario is they say no. Right. Um, now, I just wanna also make that very clear that that would be a waiver of the student day, not a waiver of the contractual responsibility of teachers, which is 189 days. So teachers would be able to use that time um, to be able to you know, close out essentially um, for the school year and maybe even in some aspects gear up um, and thinking ahead for the opening of the following school year. So I just wanted to get where, where yeah. the board might feel they want to move. Uh, yes, Dr. Kimberly. I was just going to say the other, there, we're, we've got the 180 day requirement and then 1,000, 1,080 oh, hours. hours. So we still are meeting the 1,080 hour requirement. So it would only be the day. So I think that if we, if you all would move in this direction when we write, craft a letter, we want to make sure that we're hitting the hour piece. Thank you. I did leave that part out. We definitely meet the hour requirement. It would just be a waiver of that actual yeah. day. Well, it doesn't seem very efficient to bring half the students day. back in for half a day on a Monday in June. Uh -uh. Um, I imagine the absentee um, <laughs> might push a few over into chronic. I'm not sure. sure. That's, <laughs> right. true. That's a good point. Yeah, kid. I know our buses wouldn't run if our, t if our students aren't there, but they still would get paid because they're on a 180 mm -hmm. day contract. Correct. So it's not going to affect the contract. No. Mm -hmm. Except they'll get a, a day off. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, so they're getting an early day on the seventh anyway. Maybe they'll get Mr. Burdock and a cake would, or something. If well, we they get, get a, they would have a half day on that Friday, and that's if and that's I mean just, I want to be. It's in here now. Yes, so they have a half, they day, have on half day, day Friday. Friday. That would be their official last day if the waiver was accepted. Okay. Yeah, and and um, go ahead, Dr. Kibler. We would have to, if we did that. They would just change like the the one day of the high school exams would have to get pulled back. Pulled back. Okay. I don't think we would change to make that a half day, but they would have to pull the exam day back. Mm. Gotcha. Everybody hear that one last day of studying. So, <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. so just I <laughs> just kidding. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, sorry, I apologize. That's okay. So are you getting a feel for the board, how we feel about that? Yes, yes, but I had to, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Okay, just trying to refresh. Yeah, I'm I know sorry. Guys. Uh, it'll come back to me, but I'm... Uh, half day, school exams. A... Any issues with it? No, I think I think. Oh, we should, I think I we can just go. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, we're not voting on the last day of school because right. I think we still have some potential where we could have some weather. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get out too far ahead of us, but... If we go ahead and ask for the waiver and we know yes or no, then when you do set the last day, if it falls on that Monday, then you already have that approval or not. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Sounds good to me. Second. I know we're not voting, yeah. but I, 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 get, I get consensus on that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yeah, well planned out. Sure. Thanks. Oh, yeah. He's still on the hot we're seat. We're always thinking. He is. <clears throat> I'm up. Yes, you are, you are. You ready for, you ready? Yes, Sorry. we are ready for Doing you. An official transition. So the next was just the uh, detail and summary uh, budget category reports. If anybody has questions, so uh, I would. A couple on the just on the the detail expenditure. So we're already. So the other what's? I'm sorry. I'm trying, uh, what are the the furniture and equipment? So we've gone. We're over almost sixty thousand. It's that right? What number are you in, on? We're in, on um, category five, the third one, furniture and equipment. Um, I, I would have to get back to you on what the exact expenditure, okay. and I yeah, and I, I would and say I it's can. equipment and not necessarily furniture, furniture to be honest yeah, with okay. you. But right, being so that it's in the instructional the cost, it's probably more of the equipment, and I do wonder if if that's potentially associated okay, with some yeah, of the can... whiteboards that we did last summer, um, specifically at Kennard, but I, I can look into that okay. for you. And I would say the process, because we're coming to the end of the year, everybody it, everybody knows I'm on an interim basis. So this would typically, typically be the time where we would start asking you all to approve budget transfers in between categories. So when we see things like you're pointing out, Ms. Bennett, we would be asking you to approve moving from a category that looks like it's going to be underspent before the end of the year to cover things like this. 
we're still going through that data. I've got notes and can give some examples. For example, each of the high schools had an open mm -hmm. EP position. So we know we have some salary savings of that time. So that's gonna be one that we target to ask you to approve moving out of the mid-level category for salaries to cover things like this. Um, and, and we're just working through that. And, okay, great. Well, then the other thing was just category six. Um, it was a great segue because you talked about transfers and in the transfer piece, it was 171 thousand dollars that we're over is it that same type of thing is we're going to be transferring money to cover oh yeah definitely it's the same thing and i think that might be some of the non-public uh, right placement yeah okay all right specific. thank you cool. anything else Questions? no i think the board knows that we've all talked about it we, you know health care is a major issue for us mm -hmm. right this year and uh we can look at this budget we look at next year's budget but with the escalating cost and, and things that we do, um, that's getting to be a big uh, elephant grill in the room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we're looking at easily a million dollar increase for next year because we're looking at six to eight and a half percent, even if we do take um, some out of reserves, which would be a very small amount mm -hmm. because there's so many rules around what you can and can't take out what you have to have available. Um, that it's still going to be a million dollars. It's likely going to be just over a million dollars, um, but it's definitely going to be a million dollars. So as we look at um, $14.6 million that we're spending this year, again, next year, it'll be at least $15.6 I mean, million. When you look at this budget, we can look at a lot of things. Salaries are number one. Mm -hmm. yes. Was Benefit, it 80, how much? 80, what, 87, 87 typically. 87 mm -hmm. And then the next one is, mm -hmm. is uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. Those Correct. two, the rest of the stuff, we can work at, but it's very minuscule compared to And again, to it's so things. exponential. I mean, so you you don't get the break. It's just no, yeah, no. And and it's going to take years for us to see, you know, true savings and not even savings. To be honest with you, it's it's really it'll be savings, but it'll be capping us where we are. It'll be mm -hmm. holding us steady to where we are, um, so that we don't grow exponentially with with opportunities like Everside. But but that's going to take three to five years to start seeing us to slow down that curve yeah, of yeah. six to eight percent every well, single year we may not even see that if health care costs keep going well and that that well, could sure. that could be it just right. may slow it yeah it'll slow yeah. it for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's what i think it hits yeah. nail head it slows yeah. it, it but slows to me it. it's just like going right. with green schools and solar Mm -hmm. It doesn't lower our cost. Mm -hmm. It just keeps our costs from escalating to a point of so high. That's exactly right. And, it, it and they're still escalating above the 3% inflation rate, which everybody says we're at, which my wife says at the grocery store might be a little higher. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's that's very true. Yes. You know, so it, it, it's, 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 you know, it's just something that. Double, if not triple, you know, a, the uh -huh. typical escalation rate. And that's our two big numbers. And those are our two big numbers that we cannot, I mean, I, we just cannot sustain the insurance increase. We just can't. And I'm sorry, tell, refresh our memories. We have how many employees approximately certificate? Um, cert uh, just over, with total employees, we have just over 1,200. And we budget, like right now, we budget about $100,000 for every new teacher that comes in. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, well, okay. But with our health care can cost anywhere from twelve to $13,000 per mm -hmm. person. Per person. Per person. So 1000 a month, yes. You know, uh -huh. so that's, you know, even it's... A family is even more than that. That's 18 for a family. I mean, yeah, but average, you're right. I look, I look at the number when you sit there and see yeah. our numbers and you divide by 1,200. You're right. You that is the average. That's how but I mean, some yeah, oh, family is like 18, yeah. almost getting to 19000 right now. That's a huge benefit. <laughs> so we will be coming to you for the transfer request soon. I just, we're going through it. And I, I guess in my interim status, I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. completely taking from one and just in case we would need to potentially go back or something like that. Right. But we'll get there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kibble. Sure. Okay, we on our agenda, we are scheduled for a break. Does everyone want to just power through? Keep uh, going. All right. Current board, okay, human resources. I make a motion that we accept the human resource report as discussed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And? Thank you so and? much for approving that report because in that report you just approved our new CFO, Whitney Gast, if she'll please come forward. She is a homegrown Queen Anne County person. She's a graduate Welcome. of Queen Anne's County you. High School and Ken she, Island. sorry, Ken coming Island. Ken Island High School. <laughs> and um, she's really excited for the challenge and is just, over the moon to, to just jump in feet first. So she'll be starting on Monday yes. and um, she'll be busy, busy, busy. So, oh I think God, we should, so I think we should go down and congratulate yes. her and get a good picture. <laughs>
I think we're over the moon as well. Yeah. Dr. Kibler are. probably is right. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Nice to meet Joe. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And nice to meet you. Thank you very much. All right. We're a team now. We do this. You're looking nice tonight. Carrie, we don't say that in the show. What did I say? I said he's looking very professional. Okay. Are we ready? Got it. Thank you. 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 Future meetings and events. So March 20th is our next uh, work session at 5 p.m. And then we're slated for April 10th, I'm assuming because we have Easter break or spring yes. break. Yes, yep. Uh, exactly 6 p.m. Right. board meeting. Is everybody okay? Got that? Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? I moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Aye.